Hi there. I'm Alicia. Welcome to the quick start guide for iBiller cloud billing system. In this tutorial, we will cover the following steps. Sign up for a new iBiller user account. Set up your first business profile. Choose your desired subscription plan. Add staff users to your account. Enable your tax system. Connect and configure a Bluetooth printer if needed. Add your first products or services to your inventory. Add your customer information. Create your first invoice. Manage invoices and generate reports. Track your business performance through the dashboard. Renew your subscription as needed. So, to get started, install iBilla and proceed by creating a new user account. Sign up for a new iBilla user account. After installation, when you open iBilla, you will find the login screen. If you are already registered with iBilla, you can log in by entering your mobile number and password. Otherwise, you can click on the sign up button, enter your user details, and then click the OTP verification button. Next, enter the OTP on the OTP verification screen. Set up your first business profile. In the business profile, select your country. Then, choose your business's financial year. Enter your business name and description and fill in other details. Then, click the Add Business Profile button. Choose your desired subscription plan. After selecting your plan, click the Continue to Payment button. On the payment screen, select your payment method. I am choosing UPI. After entering payment details, click the Pay Now button and wait to complete the process. Please do not click the Back button here. You have now successfully subscribed to iBilla. Finally, click the OK button, which will lead you to the basket screen. Let me introduce some functions on the basket screen. In the top right corner, you can see a shopping cart button. This button is used to clear the basket and display the total number of items in the basket. The QR code button is used to generate a QR code with invoice details, including the bill amount. It enables users to scan the bill and make a payment using a UPI app. The printer icon is used to connect to a Bluetooth printer or reprint the last invoice. Additionally, you can check the printer status here. You can share or print the last bill by tapping this fourth button. Below, you can tick this checkbox before selecting the products, if it's an IGST sale. GT stands for gross total, and D denotes the discounted amount. This red button is used to check out the sale after selecting the products. The minus button is used to decrease the quantity of the selected item. The barcode button is used to add an item to the basket by scanning the product's barcode. The last plus button is used to increase the quantity of the selected product. Add staff users to your account. To add a new staff user, follow these steps. Click on the Settings tab. Select the Users menu. You will now see the admin user listed. Click the plus button in the top right corner. Enter the user's mobile number, full name, display name for billing, user address, email, and user password. Next, choose the user's role and user status. Finally, click the Send OTP to User button. Check your user's mobile for an OTP SMS and enter the OTP here. Congratulations, you have successfully added the new staff user. If you need to edit a user, click the arrow next to their name and edit their details. Click More options to change the user's role, status, and privilege settings. 
After making changes, click the Update Profile button. Now, the user is able to log in on their device. Enable your tax system. Click the tax menu in the settings and choose your tax system, such as GST or VAT. In my case, I have chosen GST, then select your state tax category. For me, it is SGST. Next, enter your tax registration number and indicate whether your prices are tax inclusive or tax exclusive. This means specifying whether tax is included in your product prices or tax added on top of the price. After entering the tax details, click the Update Tax Details button. Connect and configure a Bluetooth printer, if needed. Select the printer menu and enable Bluetooth permission if prompted. You will now see the paired Bluetooth devices. If your printer is not listed here, pair your printer first from the Bluetooth settings. Then, click the Select button next to your listed printer. Select the printer roll size and click the Done button. And finally, click the Test Print button to perform a test print. Add your first products or services to your inventory. To add your product to inventory, go to the Product tab. Then, click the Hamburger icon. In this menu, you'll find the Add Product option, click it. Please select your product image by either clicking the camera icon or choosing from your gallery. You can also specify a color instead of an image. To remove an image, click the Delete icon and choose your color from the color palette. I've selected an image from the gallery. Make sure your image is square. After adding the image, select the product category. You can add a new category by clicking the plus icon. This will take you to the category creation screen. Add your category and choose a category color if desired. Next, enter your barcode or product code. You can add a barcode by scanning the product's barcode. I'm entering the product code as 1001. Then, provide the product name and description. Enter the opening quantity, cost, and price, along with the tax rate, discount, and any other details, if applicable. After entering all the product details, click the Add Item button. Now you have successfully added your first item. Add your customer information. You can add a new customer directly from the basket screen by clicking the plus button. Here, fill in all the appropriate customer details. The mandatory fields are indicated by a red box. You can choose between retail or wholesale customer types, and for wholesale customers, there are three subcategories to select from. Next, choose the tax preference for your customer. In my case, I choose taxable customer. Complete the remaining fields as you need and then click the Add New Customer button. Create your first invoice. We are going to create our first invoice or bill. First, select Cash Customer or Your Customer. Now, let's add items to the basket screen. You can add items in three ways. Pick items from the drop-down list. Select items from the products drawer. Use the barcode scanner to scan the product barcode by clicking the barcode button. The shopping cart icon located in the top right corner displays the total number of items added to the basket. You can clear the basket by clicking on it. I'll now add some products and proceed to check out by using the red button. But before that, 
If you want to include a UPI QR code in the bill, follow these steps. Choose the Settings tab. Select the Business menu. Go to your business profile and scroll down to enter your UPI ID. Update your business profile. Now, let's continue with the checkout process. Click the red button, choose your payment method, and then click the checkout button. If you need to scan a QR code directly from your device, click the QR code button. You can also share this QR code with your customer. If you want to share a PDF bill or print it again, click this button. You can also share this PDF bill with your customer. After adding the product to the basket screen, you can zoom in on the product image by clicking on the image. Click below the image to select an item and adjust the quantity. Another way to adjust the quantity is to simply click on the quantity label. Similarly, you can change the price by clicking on the red price label. For adding a discount, long press on the price label. To temporarily correct the product name and description, click on the product name and make the changes as needed. To change the invoice date, click the calendar icon and select the date. You can control all these functions by adding user privileges in the user settings. Manage invoices and generate reports. To access sales invoices, click on the More tab and choose the Invoice menu. Here, you can view all sales invoices. Select a user to display invoices for a specific user. Choose date ranges to view sales for specific dates. You can print previous sales by clicking the print button or open an invoice by clicking the invoice icon. You can also return sales items. Select all to return all items or clear the selection by clicking the clear button. For individual items, it will prompt you to enter the quantity for the return. Click Return button to return sales. If the sale is associated with the customer, it will ask if you want to refund the amount to the customer's account. If yes, the amount will be refunded to the customer's account. If it's a cash refund, click No. To delete an invoice, choose Delete Invoice and Confirm. Note that all deleted invoices are recorded under Deleted Invoices. If you want to export the invoice as in a 4 size PDF, you can also share this PDF invoice. At the bottom ribbon, you can see the cumulative totals. Now, let's move on to reports. You have several options here. You can print or display a PDF of the collection report for a selected date. For a user-based collection report, click this option. To generate an invoice report, select this option. You can also access a sales report with profit information. If you want to know the top selling products in your store, select this option. For high profit products, choose this option. To find out who the top performing seller is in your store, click this option. Track your business performance through the dashboard. Click on the More tab and choose the Dashboard menu. Here, you can get an overview of your business at a glance. You can use this analytics to help grow your business. 
The weekly chart displays cumulative sales, costs, and profits for each day of the particular week. The monthly chart provides data for each month. And similarly, you can analyze your yearly sales. Below, you'll find specific boxes for sales today, profit today, total invoices made today and this month, current month sales, and current month profit. Use these to keep track of your business in real time. Renew your subscription as needed. Click on the Settings tab. Select the subscription menu. Click the Renew button. Choose the plan for payment. Alternatively, iBiller will prompt you automatically when your subscription expires. Click the Renew Plan button in the prompt and proceed to choose a plan for payment. We have already covered subscription payment in the Choose Subscription Plan topic. Follow a similar process. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more helpful tutorials and updates.